What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. In this video series, I'm going to show you how to build an authentication system using Django and React. So if I enter my username and then my password, it's going to log me into my account. You can see my username here and a list of notes associated to my user. So this is when I'm logged in. If I log out of my account, you'll see I'm brought back to the login page. And if I actually go to the URL and try and access my account, you see I can't do that. I can also, if I don't have an account, I can sign up. So if I make a new account called Matt Makes Code with an email of Matt Makes Code at email.com and then a new password, confirm that password. You're going to see a user was successfully registered. It's going to take me to the login page and then I can log in with that user. And you can see I've got a new account. I haven't got any notes associated to this user, but you get the gist of how this authentication system works. So to handle the authentication, I'm using something called JWT tokens. So we're gonna have an access token, which is our short-lived token to access our account. And then we're gonna have a refresh token, which is longer lived, which we're gonna update our access token to make it secure. So in the first part of this series, so this video, what we're going to do is we're going to make the base of our authentication in our APIs. In our second video, we're going to build cookies to make it more secure. And in our third part, we're going to build our React front end. So we've got this UI here to make an authentication system. Okay. So if this video helps you in any way, can you please subscribe to the channel and like the video? By the end of this video, you're going to know how to build an authentication system using Django and React. You're also going to have a really impressive uh, project for your CV or your GitHub. So with that said, let's get into it. I'm in my Visual Studio Code. I've got my documentation open and I've also got Postman open so I can test my APIs. Okay. So to start things off in Visual Studio Code, we wanna to head to our terminal and create our Python environment. So to do this in Mac, as I'm using a Mac, we are running Python 3-M virtual environment and we'll give it a name, we'll just call it M, right? And it's gonna create this folder here. And then we want to activate this. So we're going to do source, the name of your environment, slash bin, slash activate. Okay, let me just get a bit closer. And then you can actually see we've got our M activated here because it's in brackets on the left. Okay. Now we've got that activated, we need to make some installations. So we're going to install Django, Django REST framework. And then we're going to have to install Django course headers so our front end can access our API. And then we're gonna have to install simple JWT so we can actually build our authentication. So the first two are gonna be pip free install Django. What's going on? That's spelling. Pip free install Django. Then pip free install Django REST framework. And then the next two we can just get from the documentation. So you can see we've got Django course headers here, and I'm in the course headers. Uh, documentation so I do pip free install Django course headers uh, install that and then the next one is from the Django rest framework simple JWT documentation and then we just do pip free install Django rest framework simple JWT and now install that as well so we've installed everything we needed now we want to do is actually build our Django project and then our app so if we do Django admin start project we'll give it a name so we're just going to call it backend you can see it's going to create this backend folder here what we want to do is go into our backend folder and then create our django app so we're going to do python3 manage.py start app and then we'll just call it base okay if you open your backend folder here you'll see your base folder now that setup's all done we can actually get into the code so if you go into your backend folder and then open your settings.py file bring this down you want to go to your installed apps and then we're going to add everything we just installed as well as our django app okay so we want to add django rest framework and that's added as django underscore rest framework then we want to add django course headers and then you can find that here and it's just called course headers so add that and then we're going to add our jwt as well which is just REST framework, simple JWT. Okay, and then we need to add our app, which we called base. So it's just gonna do base in here. 
and that's all our apps we've installed added. And then the next thing we want to do is add an object as we're using REST framework. We're going to add something called REST framework. It's going to be on school there. And then we need to add things to, to add our authentication. So if you go to your simple JWT authentication, see it's got that REST framework object, and you just want to add this default authentication class, okay? And that's going to enable JW, JWT authentication. There you go. And that's our settings fully configured. So if you just go into your terminal again, what we're going to do is just migrate all of that. So do python3 manage.py migrate gonna make our initial migrations and then we also want to make a super user so we can um, have just a, a initial user to begin with so we do python3 manage.py do create super user and it's gonna give you some prompts so I'm just gonna leave the default that's gonna be Matt Sellings and then I'll just put email dot email email at email dot com and then one two three one two three just place it okay that's going to create our super user for us. So the next thing I want to do now we have a user is actually build our uh, authentication routes. So if you go into base, we want to make a URLs.py file. So we've got one in backend here, but we want to make another one in our app. Then what we're going to do is head over to our JWT documentation, scroll down and just copy this here. So these make the routes to call our JWT authentication. So these are going to build the tokens, right? So we've got our access token here and our refresh token here. And it comes from these imports from the REST framework package, right? So we're going to have to do from Django dot URLs import path. And that's all fine. But the next thing we want to do, we could, they put this API here, right? We're actually going to take this out and we need to call this urls.py file and we're going to call it from our other urls.py file in backend, okay? So the way we're going to do that is we're going to import include and we're going to make another path and it's going to be called API and then it's going to include our base.urls file, okay? So basically what's doing everything in our base.urls file here is going to have api slash before it okay so now we can call these what i want to do is actually call them so if i head over to postman which is our api testing application we're going to make a new collection and then we'll add a request okay and then we'll just call this login so this is as we we need to run it first so if we do python free manage.py run server you can see we're running on here so and it's api slash token and that's what we've got here and we've got the api for it in here okay yeah so yeah we want to call that and then we want to add a body and what we're going to do is we're going to pass our username and password just like a login and one we created was our super user and they had the name of matt sellings sorry that's a Username, come on, that signs, and then they also had a password, and that's going to be one, two, three. That's fine, isn't it? Okay, if you send that, it's not a get request, make sure you change this to post, and it's going to give you two tokens, all right? So we've got our access token and our refresh token. What we want to do now is actually create a new model which we're going to call notes. So each user is going to have a set of notes they have, but they won't be able to access them notes if they're not logged in. And each user is going to have different notes, right? So if we go into our models, we want to create a new model called note models dot model, and then they're going to have a so description models dot child build have a max length of say 300 and then each node can have an owner which is going to be a models dot foreign key which is going to be a user so what i need to do is actually import the standard user so from django dot contrib dot auth 
user.models import user. So now we've got the user, we can plug it in here. So what this is doing is that the user owns this node object and then on delete, if our user object is deleted, it's going to delete this node, okay? So it's going to be models.cascade and then we give it a related name called node. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, that's good. Next one we'll do is actually create a serializer for this node so that we can pass this object as JSON to our front end. So let's create a new file called serializer.py. We're gonna do from we wanna do from rest framework import serializers. We also want to do from dot models import node. What we're going to do is we're going to do a new class and it's going to be no serializer. It's going to be a serializer dot model serializer, okay? And then when I add class meta, and then the model is going to be, which is going to be the note and the fields we're going to allow, which is going to be the ID. And then also the description. Okay. And now what we want to do is actually add some permissions. So the point is, what we do is you're not allowed to access uh, the notes unless you're authenticated. So you go back into your views, okay, or we go into our views. We're going to create a function that gets all the to dos for a specific user. So if we do from it was so it was here. Just copy and paste this so we can get the standard user. So we want to create a new API which we're gonna get from this documentation. So to create an API endpoint, we want to use this decorate here at API view. So we're gonna import these two as well. So we're going to add this decorator at API view and we're going to get request. So we put it in this array here and then we make our function. So it's just going to be get notes, just pass in request. So what I do is we want to get the notes for a specific user. So if I do logged in user equals request dot user. And then I want to do to do is not to do is notes. So we need to also import notes from dot models. Import note note dot objects dot filter, and then we're gonna have user. Uh, so it's gonna be owner equals user. Okay. So we're just getting all the notes for the authenticated user, right? And then we wanna pass in a serializer. So we need to import our serializer for so from dot serializer import node serializer so we're going to do node serializer and then we're going to pass in our notes and then we've got many of them we've got multiple and then what we do is return response it's going to contain the serializer data which is going to be a list of all the notes for that user okay so at the moment technically anyone can call this function so what we want to do is add permissions to our um our views right so if we go over to this documentation so django rest framework permissions what we want to do is first enable them so we're gonna have to do if installing those right so you want to in our rest framework object which we added the jwt you want to copy and paste this which is going to be our default permission classes and you're going to have to need authentication okay so if we go to our settings Scroll down to rest framework, come on. and then we got our default permission classes as well. Okay, come back to our views, and then if I scroll down, we're going to use this decorator here. So, what we do is add permission classes after API view, and then we want to add this as well. So, the different permissions we're also going to import uh, allow any. So 
it if I copy, copy this. This means you need to be authenticated to actually access this API function, okay? Now what we want to do is actually make this callable. So if you go to your URLs file, so your base URLs file, so from dot views import uh, get notes, and then what we do is create a new path. So notes slash, and then get notes, comma get notes. Cool. And then before we actually do this, we need to make migrate our changes because we never mig uh, migrated them. So if I bring this up, we do Python three manage dot py make migrations that's going to migrate our new model and then we want to do python3 manage.py migrate and then actually migrate our migrations okay you see that's all worked out okay then we want to run our app again so python3 manage.py run server you see it's running here again okay next what i want to do is go to our um postman again we're gonna create a new request and let's say get notes okay and it was just slash notes so if i run this so we didn't get request if i run this it should fail okay so what was that error here i actually didn't find it oh api slash notes so this should fail as well yeah so uh, we failed with a 401 as we're not authorized we need to add an authorization key basically so in our header we're going to do authorization then we're going to do bearer and then add our access key all right so if i log in then i grab this access key contain invalid new line characters oh there you go there we go. I think you have to add quotes here yep there we go if I press send given token not valid for any token type we don't need quotes there you go so you can see we we're actually authenticated and we're getting all of our notes which we actually don't have so just to create some notes what we can do is go into admin from dot models import note and then admin dot site dot register we can add this note uh, model to our admin dashboard okay so if i create a new we we'll go to admin log in you can see we've got these notes we're going to add a new one the owner is going to be at sellings and then subscribe to you. That makes me look really good there. So we'll save that. I say fine. And then if I head over to Postman and then I get it again, you can see we've got a new note with subscribe to Mamix code. And that has worked perfectly. So that's the first part of the video. The next part we're going to actually make our security a bit tighter. So we're going to be using cookies instead of just having it um, pass through to the front end. So it's going to pass through in a HT, uh, HTTP cookie. That's going to be much more secure. So yeah, that's the end of this video. If it helped you in any way, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will go a long way. And I'll see you in the next part. Thank you.